Well, today we're going to talk about Google Forms for genealogists, and, and I uh, am a bit of, as I told Jeff before we started, a bit of an evangelist for this product. Uh, I don't understand why it's not used more in the genealogy community. Hopefully I'll be able to turn most of you on to uh, using Google Forms. Uh, I become addicted to them. It's almost like, you know, back in the 70s when contact paper came out, now I'm, do now I'm dating myself. You know, there wasn't anything I couldn't cover with contact paper, the bottoms of shelves, you know, bookcases. Well, that's the way I feel about Google Forms. I mean, I'm always looking for new uses for Google Forms. So we're going to talk about what are Google Forms. Uh, it says up there, what is Google Forms, Google Forms being the application. We're going to cover mostly focus on creating a form. I mean, to take you through this very, very slowly, uh, it's not too difficult to learn, but there are a lot of options, so I want to make sure that uh, we go through it slowly. We're going to talk about the different components of Google Forms. How do you use a form? Once you've created a form, how do you get people to use it and fill out the information? Then, we're also going to talk about form themes that you can actually decorate your form so it doesn't look like a boring piece of paper. This is an important part, confirmations and notifications. When someone fills out a form, you want a confirmation message, not just that says, hey, congratulations, you filled out the form, but what if you want to sell one of your other products, advertise one of your events, or shoot them over to a different website? You can do that. Same thing with notifications. What good is a form and people filling it out if you don't know that they filled it out. We'll talk about notifications. The different genealogy uses for Google Forms. Now I've only uh, broken the surface uh, in terms of what can be done and I imagine that after this webinar uh, I'm hoping that people go forth and prosper in terms of Google Forms and come up with new ideas. We'll talk about some tips and tricks for Google Forms. And then the next thing I do want to mention is that there is a syllabus. The handouts are bundled with the purchase of the CD recording, uh, which is Google Forms for Genealogists. It's at the LegacyFamilyTreeStore.com. This syllabus, I put a lot of work, a lot of heart and soul into it because I wanted to make sure that people could use it and understand Google Forms. It is 14 pages. It's step-by-step. -step. There are screen captures. It does walk you through the entire process. What I want to, yeah, and what I want to clarify uh, is that really there is no such thing as Google Forms. Uh, it's sort of a term that's developed on its own. What we're talking about mostly is Google Docs, uh, and Google Docs is another webinar that we covered last month. Google Docs is a feature of Google. It's an application where you can create documents, presentations, spreadsheets. Okay, if you've ever wanted to collect information from a group of people such as family members, maybe you've wanted to index a collection of data such as obituaries, Google Forms, makes this process very easy from start to finish. Now we're going to talk about creating a form. Okay, well what, this is what the overall process is and I'm going to go live to Google Forms in just a minute. We're going to create a form. You add the questions and then you click save. And then when the form is created, uh, it also creates a form spreadsheet which holds the data collected from the form. Okay, I'm going to switch over here. And this is Google Docs is at Google.com. Uh, you have to have a Google account. Now we've covered this before in previous webinars. A Google account is free for you to set up. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. So go ahead and set one up. Uh, usually when you go to Google Docs, it'll say create an account now. We're not going to walk through that because we've been through this before. But we're going to sign in here. And this is what Google Docs looks like. It will list any documents that you've created, uh, anything that uh, you're sharing with other people, etc. So let's start creating a form. You go up to Create New, and right there it says Form. Okay, and this is what the form looks like. This is a blank form. 
let's say that we're going to do an obituary index. Why would I do an obituary index? Maybe I'm working with a lot of obituaries. I want to collect all the data. Uh, you could use this for various uses, like a family reunion. What if you wanted a questionnaire to go out to family members, uh, asking them what covered dish do you want to bring, where, do, where are we going to meet this year, what size t-shirt do you want. We'll get into the various uses later on, but I want to cover how to do the forms right now. You have to name the form. First thing is you want to give it a name, and I will call it an obituary index. I have to spell it right. Is the title of the form. And then here is where you can give an explanation as to what the form is. This will help the people that are filling out the form. This form is for our society's indexing project of Illinois obituaries. Let's say that we're doing this for a society. Great. And that is all that you need to do right now. Periodically, you can hit Save. Remember, the nice thing with Google Docs is they will save periodically for you. Okay, So all we've done here is we've given it a title, given it a description. The next thing is, is you start to add question information. What is the first question that you're going to ask? Well, you come over here, you hit the Edit Pencil button. And remember, a form is made up of a series of questions, very much like a survey. So when you're doing obituaries, what is the first thing that you usually put in? I want last name, and I will use the term decedent, the person that's deceased. That is the name of the question title. If I wanted to, I could add help text. This would help the person who's filling it out understand, so we could say, uh, enter the last name listed in the obituary. Next thing is you need to decide what type of question do you want. Boy, look at the choices there. There is text, paragraph text, multiple choice, check boxes, choose from a list where you supply a list, a scale, and a grid. And I'm going to go over these types in a minute. For now, we're going to leave it with text. I also have the option of making this a required question. And I will make this a required question for now and say done. And that's her question. Let's add a few more. I'm going to go to edit. What would I do next? I would say uh, first name. Uh, or I could say given name of decedent. I'm not going to fill in the help text just to help things speed along here. Uh, let's say I don't need to make this a required question, and I go done. So I have two questions. I have a very basic form with two questions. Okay. Now, what do I do? I save this, and what if I'm done? If I am done, I can go ahead and close this window. And notice I have a new document here in my document list called Obituary Index. You know, go ahead and click on that to see what it looks like. Wait a minute. This doesn't look like a form, does it, Jeff? No, it looks like a spreadsheet. Well, what I want to point out is this is what you've created, really. You've created a container to collect data. What you do have, though, up here on the Form menu, you go to Form. And you can go to the live form. And this is what the form looks like. This is what people would see if you were to email it to them or send them the, uh, send them the URL. OK? Now, uh, I'm going to fill this out. Let's say that the last name was uh, McKenty. Let's say the first name is Jervis. And I go ahead and submit it. Now, what happens, watch up here. If I don't fill in the required field, let's see what I get. Looks like you have a question or two that still needs to be filled out. That is how the required field works. Go ahead and submit, and I get a thank you message. I can go back to the form, or I can just close this tab. And look at that. The information is entered into the database. Jeff, are there any questions out there? I, I want to start very basic and very slow.
Uh, Karen has a basic question, and she's just asking, as long as she has Internet access, can she, can she be using this on her iPad?